This video discusses three ways to acquire a business. Buying an existing business, starting a business from scratch, and buying a franchise. Buying an existing business. The advantages of buying an existing business include established clientele. The business is already open and operating. Customers already know about it, so revenue is already flowing through the door the day you purchase the business. Ease of financing. It's easier to borrow money from banks when the bank knows that the existing business already has customers and it already has a track record that shows it's making money. The employees that work for the business are experienced. They don't need to be trained. You don't need to spend time and money hiring. You already have people who know how to do the work. Established lines of credit and established relationships with suppliers. All that work is already taken care of for you. And the existing track record. If the business has been operating for the past five years and it's been generating revenues of $5,000 a week for the past five years, it's pretty likely that it's going to continue to earn that revenue. Having that track record reduces the risk of the unknown. Disadvantages of buying an existing business. Well, you really don't know about the actual financial health of the firm. I mean, the person trying to sell you the business obviously has it in their interest to exaggerate a bit about how much money this business has been making. So you really do have to do a little bit of fact-finding and verify everything that you hear. The location and the reputation of the business may be poor. You may be buying the problems of the previous owner and the pricing strategy and some of the, and the, the products and some of the other things that the previous business has been known for are already established and it's hard to make those changes. Did you know that buying an existing business is highly recommended by experts? The odds of success are much better. A family owned business is really a kind of existing business. It's a situation where the business already exists, it's within the family, maybe mom and dad have been running it for a number of years and mom and dad decide to retire and the kids take over the business. The advantages of the family owned business. Often family owned businesses have a very good reputation. Your family name's at stake. Employees are loyal. The support of family members. Often, many of the family members work there and they understand the nature of the business. People who purchase or acquire the family-owned business have experience. They may have grown up with the business since childhood, so they understand from day one how this business operates. Some of the disadvantages of the family-owned business conflict about who's really in charge. So you could think of it this way. If two brothers take over the business, who really is the boss? Or even picture this. Mom and dad have built this business from nothing over the past 30 years and suddenly you take it over. Are they really going to let you make all the changes that you have in mind? Or are they still going to have some connection to the business? There may be pressure from family members to create jobs for relatives and some of these relatives may not necessarily be the most ideal employee. What price do you pay mom and dad? This can be complicated. Why? Well mom and dad have spent a lifetime creating this business. Now suppose the market value of this business is a million dollars. They could sell this business to a stranger and get a million dollars and they could use that money for their retirement. What do the kids expect? Do the kids who are taking over the business expect that mom and dad give it to them for nothing or give it to them at a discount? How do you arrive at a fair price that everyone can live with? Starting a business from scratch. Basically starting up a business from nothing. The advantages. There's no baggage, it's brand new. You're free to make all your own choices. 
negotiate your own lenders, hire your own employees, train them with the way you want them to be trained, find your own suppliers, you're starting fresh. It's yours, you own it. Disadvantages of starting from scratch. The unknown. We really don't know if customers are going to demand our product or how much. We have no relationships with suppliers. There's no previous track record. Startup costs can be extremely high. In the case of our coffee shop, you need to purchase the land, construct the building, decorate, advertise. Everything has to start from point zero and that can be very expensive. And until the business is up and running, cash is constantly flowing out. You need access to large amounts of capital to get the business up and running and to survive to the point where revenues are coming in from sales so that the business can survive on its own merits. Buying a franchise. What's a franchise? Well, a franchise is a contract that gives the franchisees, that's the buyer, the individual who's purchasing the franchise, the right to sell the product of the franchisor, the seller. Within the contract, there are stipulations about how the product or service will be sold and the amount and type of payment back to the franchisor. Those payments are called royalties. Advantages of buying a franchise. Access to expertise. The franchisor has been running this business for a long time. They understand how to sell hamburgers, how to sell subs, how to, how to sell pizzas, how to sell coffee and so forth. They really understand the industry and it's in their interest to provide support. It can be fast. The structure can be up and running and you move in and start operating the business. Hopefully, the brand is well developed. We all know about McDonald's. We all know about Tim Hortons. We all know about Subway. These are brands that are already known to the consumer and are already trusted. The franchisor will provide the franchisee, the buyer, with training. They'll teach you everything you need to know to run a successful business. The franchisor often will help arrange financing. The franchisor, as a large organization, is in a position to purchase supplies in large quantities. Large quantities of hamburg buns, large quantities of patties, and by buying in a larger volume, they can get much better deals and hopefully pass those lower costs on to you. With a well-known brand and with training and expertise, hopefully there's lower failure rates, although there is no guarantee that the business will not fail. Disadvantages. Recall that an agreement was signed between the franchisor and the franchisee. Well, a lot of the terms within that contract tend to be in favor of the franchisor. So, various policies may be under tight control by the franchisor. They will tell you what you are going to sell, how you are going to sell it, your hours of operation, how you will train your staff, how you will decorate your restaurant. There's not necessarily as much freedom as many entrepreneurs or small business operators may want. The local market may be saturated. We've seen situations where two Starbucks might be across the street from each other, or there might be a two Tim Hortons or three Tim Hortons within a, a block or two. Well, the customers who already live and work in those areas are now going to be spread across a greater number of franchises. The payments, the royalties that have to be paid to the franchiser, they're required even if the profits are low. Royalties 
are typically paid from the gross revenues collected. The franchisor controls how the business is run and how the product is made. Very little room for the business owner to demonstrate much creativity.